uh, Global STEMX would like to thank these sponsors for allowing this to be possible. It's been a real great conference so far this year with many interesting presentations and hopefully uh, you'll get something out of this one and we'll uh, be able to have some very fruitful discussions near the end. And we always like to start with this slide right here. So if on the left hand side of the whiteboard you'll see either a, a, a pointer or probably a little star shaped thing that looks kind of like this. Hopefully you can see that little star and if you could just put a, a little click on the map with that star to show where you are in the world. There you can see me. I'm there in Colorado, in the USA. It's uh, a little after 11 o'clock in the morning here. I'd like to see where everybody else is from. So just to the left of the whiteboard, the second item down on the menu. Uh, let's see here. Whiteboard permissions, probably have to enable the tools. Got it. East Coast, up around New York area, South Africa. Uh, New Jersey, wouldn't want to confuse that with New York. Somewhere in Florida, looks like possibly on the Gulf Coast. Up around Lake Michigan area somewhere. And Dottie, if you just joined us, if you could uh, jump in there and click on where you're located. And we're almost ready to move on. and start the presentation proper. Awesome. Okay. Well, this is Release the Geniuses, Promoting Innovation and Creativity During the School Day. My name is Philip McIntosh. I teach seventh grade math and science at uh, Challenger Middle School in Colorado Springs. Um, you see my email address there and also my Twitter handle. I'll be showing that again later as well. Um, Steve uh, Hargaden is our sort of on and off moderator. We don't actually have a moderate, moderator probably uh, today, but that's okay with uh, just a few of us here. I think it should go pretty smoothly. So um, the reason why I'm talking about this today, I don't know, many of you probably uh, are fairly in tune with what's going on in education and what people around the world are trying to do to uh, improve education and help transform children today into what we call learners instead of students, people who are actually become lifelong learners who are study something that they're really passionate about and really become good at it as opposed to just being passive recipients of, of uh, education facts and things of that nature. And I think there's a very good reason for that. And uh, I like this first quote by Victor Hugo here, an invasion of armies can be resisted, but not an idea whose time has come. And I really think that uh, passion-based learning and really allowing more open-ended creative problem solving and self-discovery processes in school really and truly is an idea whose time has come. Um, a lot of people uh, might not agree with that still. I think school is where you sit down and you're taught stuff. But I like this other quote by William Pollard, learning and innovation go hand in hand. The arrogance of success is to think that what you did yesterday will be sufficient for tomorrow. And that sums up why we do things like passion-based learning in school, I think. Now, I learned very early the difference between knowing the name of something and knowing something. I quote by one of my favorite physicists, Richard Feynman. And uh, what we're really talking about here today goes by many names. Uh, I'd like to thank Denise Krebs for this uh, awesome word graphic that she created which shows some of the different terms that are kicking around out there uh, describing what I'm talking about today. Genius Hour seems to have really kind of come to the forefront here of late. Uh, I'm not convinced I really like that name a whole lot. Um, we also see 20% time here which um, 
I think was uh, one of the original names for it because this whole idea of allowing people to work on stuff that they're interested in that might not necessarily be related to what your job or what your assignment is kind of originated at Google, which is why it's called also Google 20% Time. Uh, rather interestingly, I think there's been some news recently that Google has somewhat uh, backed off of this uh, and to focus more on the projects that management wants them to work on. But then again, I've heard also somebody say, no, that's not true. There never was a 20% time at Google. It was always 120% time. You're expected to do stuff um, that you were assigned dur during your regular hours, but then you were allowed to stay and work on whatever you wanted to after the hours. So a lot of the inspiration for this uh, uh, idea does come from Google, even though I think it was probably invented possibly at 3M Corporation. Uh, Daniel Pink also uh, uh, made note of FedEx Day, which was started by an Australian company where they gave them one day, hey, you start today, you work on something, and absolutely positively must be done by tomorrow. And so that's how they would try to solve problems, fix things that were broken, and come up with innovative ideas at that company. Uh, Google Time, an hour of wonder, uh, passion time, 100 minutes of genius, curiosity Friday, um, these are some innovation day. Um, Notice that it says Montessori method here because the Montessori method is per, of education is kind of like based on allowing passion-based learning all day long. And there are some people that think that's the way really schools ought to go. I uh, am not convinced that it should be exactly like that, uh, but maybe it should. Um, but most people are not quite yet at the stage where they're willing to let kids study whatever they want to uh, all day long. A couple others that didn't make this list here are... Uh, Hack Day, which I understand LinkedIn uses uh, one day a quarter. They have a hack day where employees are encouraged to work on a project that they're highly interested in of their choice. And another one is the bootleg uh, time, which is uh, I've heard is what it's called at 3M these days. Okay. Now, I don't know how many of you are teachers. Uh, uh, maybe many of you are. But I'd like to try a little poll and just see uh, who is already attempting or at least trying to convince other people to incorporate some sort of uh, maker ed, which is a, a, a period of the day where kids are allowed to make stuff that they're interested in, or a passion-based learning program. Right above uh, everybody's name in the main room there, there's a, uh, a little uh, checkbox that you'll see it where you respond yes or no. This is just a yes or no poll. Please select yes if you are trying some sort of maker ed or passion-based learning program, and no, if you're not, I've just clicked yes, and uh, in about a minute, I will display the results of the poll, and we'll see what comes up there. So this should be interesting. I know at my school, uh, myself and my co-teacher, um, we have a school of about 700 plus kids, 6th, 7th, and 8th grades, um, and we're the only ones doing this so far, and we've had some difficulty in um, maybe promoting the idea. I think that we have the polls up. Here it is. Okay. Here's the poll. Okay. So four out of nine are trying something like this. One out of nine has not tried it yet. Very interesting. So we got a, a group of people here that are really interested in, in implementing passion-based learning, and hopefully we'll uh, be able to discuss that with each other here uh, as we get to the end. Now, as I mentioned, my teaching partner and I, who is Lisa Crydell, uh, she teaches social studies and language arts in seventh grade. I teach math and science. We each also have a literacy class that we teach. Um, we made a video about our passion-based learning, and I'd like to show that to you now. Um, I understand that the uh, web tour tool is working generally pretty well right now, so we're going to hope that it is. This uh, YouTube video uh, that we made, you can see the link for it there if you want to jot that down, um, uh, and you can watch it if it doesn't play, but we're going to give it a shot here. So I'm going to switch over to the web tour tool.
So that was that. We had a lot of fun. I hope uh, hope that didn't go on too long. It's about 10 minutes. We try to keep all our videos uh, under 10 minutes, and uh, perhaps that uh, if you actually go and watch that video again, you will see better the link to the instructable that uh, we've made uh, on how we run our creation time in our class. And uh, um, if, if you wanted to show that to some kids to say, hey, look, here's what some other kids have done as well. Now, you may have noticed that almost all of our uh, participants always choose to make something or to build something. Um, Genius Hour, as it's called, is not necessarily all about that. Uh, it can definitely be about learning and teaching yourself something. And one of the things we hope to do in the future is to steer our kids more in the direction of learning something. For example, if you have an interest in Italian, well, let's figure out a way that you can use this time to teach yourself Italian or uh, any other topic. You want to learn more about how the brain works. Well, let's study neurons, okay? Or let's you study neurons. I will help you study neurons. And But the point is that we want to use this time to study, learn, do something that is not part of the regular school curriculum, okay? And uh, some of the things that uh, will help if you're trying to implement something like this is to definitely uh, provide some kind of a planning process. Just don't make it open season in the room and let the kids try to figure something out from scratch. We use that form that I mentioned where they simply begin by jotting down some ideas that they have, what are they interested in, and then we try to whittle that down and narrow it down into a final a project idea. Now, if uh, chaos disturbs you, then you may be a little uncomfortable when this starts, uh, first starts out because uh, it's pretty chaotic in there. The kids get generally really excited about it. They're kicking ideas around. They want to even get started on something before they even know what they want to get started on. At least that's been our experience. And uh, you have to just be willing to accept that there's going to be chaos. But it does tend to settle out after several sessions when kids actually start focusing on what project they've decided they're going to work on or what topic they would like to learn more about. It's also very important to share the results uh, with the community. They can do this by standing in front of the class and uh, presenting what they've learned or their project to someone. Uh, some of them have made uh, short YouTube videos that they will show to the class or write a little paper, or maybe just even a traditional old poster board uh, about their topic. You saw the one uh, young lady made a poster of the human knee, which was very effective. And she learned a tremendous amount about her own knees uh, in doing that. And that was very interesting. It's also, uh, as much as you think that almost every kid would like jump on an opportunity to do this during school, that's not always the case. And uh, I call it learner's block, where a child is somewhat resistant to this idea. That may be because they are they think it's weird that they would be allowed to do whatever they want, well, you know, quotes, unquote, under the whatever you want part, but to work on something that is not part of the school curriculum during school time and they feel a little uncomfortable with that idea. Uh, other times they're so grade obsessed that they freak out over the idea that they will not be allowed to use this time to improve their grades somehow. And so for those kids, you have to have, you have to be ready for that, okay? So here's some of the things that we have uh, tried and used for those reluctant uh, folks that would rather work on homework. <laughs> and frankly, I've had a couple that said that they'd rather do a worksheet than actually work on something they were interested in, which was truly sad. Um, but uh, one thing we've tried is codeacademy.com. Um, you can, uh, they can sign up for a free account there, attempt to learn programming. Maybe they'll like it, maybe they won't. Uh, you can look around the room, see what needs to be done. Uh, you'll see a picture of a project that was recently done in the room by someone that wasn't exactly sure what they wanted to do. I also have realized that I have some metal trash cans that could definitely be improved by decoupage, and so I'm holding that one in reserve for someone that has an interest in art, and I would like to offer them the opportunity to decoupage my trash cans. So that's available for somebody that can't think of something. Something that we've uh, come up with recently is this idea of what we call a genius hour junkyard, which is a box full of seemingly random stuff, like uh, old thread spools, empty bottles, uh, caps, bits of plastic, some wire that you have found around the place, uh, empty tape dispensers, uh, toilet paper rolls, uh, interesting shaped pieces of cardboard, all kinds of stuff that we just toss in this box that kids can use to you know, build sculptures out of, to make architectural models, 
some of them. You saw some of those robot builders that we had in the uh, in the video. There's great robots that can be built out of seemingly junk parts. And on a related topic, um, we have the take this apart uh, concept, where we have some old, like a broken radio that doesn't work anymore, or a toy that uh, has stopped working properly, where the mission is just to see if you can completely disassemble it into all of its component parts, lay it out in a beautiful array, and then take a picture of it. It's tremendous uh, what can be learned uh, about using tools by doing something like that. Many of our kids have never drilled a hole in anything in their life, or a lot of them have only <laughs> got a limited experience with a pair of pliers or a screwdriver. And so by having a take it apart session or area, well, it gives them a chance to maybe do something like that. And you saw that we stocked the room with kits, like the Little Bits Electronic Assembly Kit, uh, the Zolm Assembly Tool, uh, Erector Sets are great. Um, I would stay away from Legos only because so many kids do Legos already that uh, we just want to get them outside of their box, okay? Uh, more ideas? Uh, Instructables.com is a great website to get project ideas. Uh, Make Magazine and their website, excellent. Make Magazine is wonderful. Sometimes, uh, uh, a couple of times I've brought in uh, back issues and let kids leaf through it. Uh, American Science Surplus Catalog is a great thing. If you get on their mailing list, they'll send you one once in a while. It's just a cheap little catalog uh, full of weird stuff that they buy on surplus and offer at super cheap prices. And uh, I'll say, hey, who wants a weird science catalog? There's always a taker on that. And they'll take it. And a few days later, quite often said, hey, Mr. McIntosh, I'm going to order that green laser pointer in there and attach it to this weird arm thing that I found at home. So American Science Surplus is just full of super low cost parts that people find interesting. And they will like that a lot. Uh, Robot Magazine is another good one for kids that are interested in electronics and robots. And finally, the book which is entitled Recycle Robots by Robert Malone, is really good. This is how to make model robots out of some of the junk parts that you might have in your Genius Hour junkyard. And uh, also it includes some parts of its own to be combined. So this is a really uh, a nice book that is also a kit in a book that kids can use to make stuff in class if they just can't think of anything else to make. Okay? Uh, this is our third year of doing this uh, process. We do it one hour a day. Uh, once a week, okay, once a week in the afternoon, we have an hour devoted to it. This fella went ahead and made that burrito blaster that we saw in the video. He made that this year, and it's pretty much exactly like the design that was shown on the make video. It's got the exact same kind of valve and everything, but they modified it to make it shorter by making the barrel turn around and come the other way, which I thought was a pretty cool idea, and uh, he's going to fire that out in the parking lot for us uh, next week. This guy is uh, attempting to improve his model making skills. He's built models in the past, but he's never built one quite this intricate or detailed before. And I'm a longtime model builder, so I was able to give him some hints on how to uh, improve his model building skills. He works on that in class, which is fun. <laughs> this young lady, she remade one of our hall passes. This is a hall pass that was actually a Genius Hour project last year. Uh, I had a rubber banana slug that was used as a hall pass that got apparently stolen. And so a kid last year remade one out of rubber and foam and stuff. And it was getting kind of ratty looking. So this uh, kid decided she wanted to improve it and has wrapped it with yellow duct tape and uh, painted the eye back on it. Her name is Jacquinetta, by the way, which was a lot of fun. And um, this uh, athlete here, really into lacrosse, her project uh, that she's working on is she is restringing the, uh, the webbing on her lacrosse stick. And uh, she's never done it before, and she's going to uh, learn how to do it uh, in class. Okay, and one more. This is one of those in-class projects that you have. We are using iPads a lot in the class this year, and I challenged the kid can, to make a hall pass that uh, could be taken a picture of and then used on the iPad if we open it up in an editing app like GoodReader or Notability something that you can draw on. If they need a hall pass, they would just show their iPad to the teacher. The teacher can actually write directly on it on the iPad, and they don't actually have to have a, a, a paper hall pass. So a child uh, made the hall pass on the board, and the kids come up and photograph it and keep it in their photo roll for future use. OK, um, so those are some things to do. Here are some things that I would like uh, to recommend that you avoid if you're going to attempt some sort of a, 
uh, passion-based learning pro program. One of them is, is don't allow this time, this simple one hour a week, to drift into something that is not genius hour. There are a few kids that will insist that they've absolutely got to work on homework during this time. And I will admit that near the end of the grading period, we will loosen up on that a little bit. But most of the time, we say, no, no, you cannot work on homework. You've got to work on something more interesting than that. Um, don't be too controlling. You know, some of the ideas they come up with are pretty off the wall. Some of them are not even doable, but we don't want to discourage them. So we let them to proceed up to a point and let them discover on their own uh, whether or not their idea is going to work or not, or whether they're going to be able to accomplish what they thought they were. And then we try to steer them in maybe in a more feasible direction. Don't allow the planning phase to never end. Sometimes this is a technique used by the reluctant ones uh, who think, well, if I just kind of plan this thing forever, I'll just never have to do it. Uh, so you just kind of keep an eye on that and force it into the actual active phase at some point. And sometimes um, these uh, questionable ideas, as I said, they just don't seem to lead to any fruition. At that point, you, you've got to intervene and, uh, and either redirect those or steer them in a new direction, or even just say, hey, this is not going to work. Let's, let's think of something else. Okay? And uh, the idea is to work on this at school. They absolutely can and should work on stuff at home, uh, but they shouldn't work on it all at home and then come in and sit around with nothing to do at class. So there has to be a balance between what they work on at home and what they work on in class. And ideally, they can take it home and work on it, bring it in and work on it, take it home and work on it, as the case may be. Okay. All right. Uh, a couple of additional resources to get you thinking or inspire you, a book called Creating Innovators by Tony Wagner is a, a very interesting read about what happens to a series of kids that he sort of followed through their school career when they were allowed to kind of follow their passions. Uh, Invent to Learn by Sylvia Martinez and Gary Steger, a new book uh, about uh, allowing uh, creation time in school. This was available for free on an electronic version up through Friday. I hope some of you saw that and were able to snag that. Uh, a new book, which is not necessarily applicable to what we're doing in school, but is all about this whole concept of the 20% doctrine. Uh, it's by Ryan Tate. It's available on Amazon and other places um, about how tinkering can lead to just great ideas. And certainly tinkering and is something that we definitely allow uh, during our uh, passion-based learning time. And of course, anything by Ken Robinson, who is a great proponent of uh, bringing more creativity back into schools. Okay. And uh, you are probably a maker of some kind or a learner. Uh, otherwise, you wouldn't be interested in this. Uh, I enjoy making things. This is a set of bongos that I made out of um, a uh, pair of, of some gourds along with a, a coworker of mine. We spent the summer making uh, gourds out of drums. Uh, excuse me, drums out of gourds. This is a set of bongos. So those are actually bottle gourds. This is wood. That's goat skin on the top, uh, hemp twine around the rim and a very interesting moldable low temperature plastic called Instamorph that we use to make the brackets. But you're a maker probably, whether you sew, you knit, you write, you uh, do art of some kind, maybe you're a woodworker, um, do crochet, anything that you can also do during class to show kids that you are into this thing too will be a help at letting them know that, hey, this really is an okay thing to do at school. Okay. Um, rather than provide just a, a giant list of other people who are interested in doing for this, I think the best way to find others to collaborate and work with on that is to look for these hashtags on Twitter. Genius Hour is a good one, and another one is Maker Ed. Um, I see a request to see the book slide again. Yes, I will come back to that. Uh, follow these hashtags on Twitter. Follow the people that are using those hashtags, and you'll find dozens of people uh, to uh, collaborate with. There's a Maker Ed chat on Twitter at 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time every Tuesday evening uh, with some awesome people on there. And while you're uh, doing both of these things, you'll find many like-minded people to follow and network with. So the, not sure which, this is the book title slide right here that somebody asked for, so I'm showing that again. And if you have a question uh, while we're waiting, giving that a little time, if you want to fire it into the chat window I'd, or a uh, clarification, I'd be happy to address that. Otherwise, we'll just uh, allow a, a bit of silence here, allow you to write those down. And of course, this, this recorded version will be available after the show. Okay, ready to move on? All right, now I'm 
going to end up here with almost like a question, and this this whole idea of genius hour. I am not convinced that that is the best thing to call this. Uh, I know um, that there are folks that uh, have a, sort of like a catchphrase of telling kids that, hey, you're a genius. Go do amazing things. Well, you know, they're, may gonna, they're probably going to do amazing things, but you don't have to be a genius to go do amazing things. You know, in accordance with uh, Carol Dweck's uh, theories about mindset, really what you have to do is really be interested enough in something to go try it, be willing to keep working on it until you get it, and not be discouraged if you don't get it right the first time. So I'm kind of opposed, actually, to this whole uh, Genius Hour moniker, and I'd like to call it something else. We, we started calling it at our school Personal Learning and Creation Time, which I think is a very accurate name, but doesn't really roll off the tongue very well. Um, and Genius Hour has, has gotten a lot of momentum lately, so we sort of adopted that, although I, I'm not uh, convinced that is the best name for it. Uh, so uh, I'm looking for something else, uh, and if anybody has any suggestions, uh, Angelique, I think Growth Hour is a really good one. I like that a lot. Um, uh, I like it a lot better than Genius Hour, because I think, you know, we're going against the grain there. We should not be telling kids that they're geniuses. We should be uh, reward. Uh, encourage them to work hard, to try hard, and not get discouraged, and to realize that life is an ever-learning and ever-growing process. So thank you very much. Uh, we have a, a bit of time left for uh, discussion. If you want to uh, me to uh, authorize your mic, I can do that, and you can speak to it. Please let's stay in touch. Here's uh, my slide again with my email address. and. Uh, my uh, Twitter account, and my, uh, my blog website where I write about these things, do book reviews, and think, uh, some other things as well. Okay? So if anybody wants to talk, just uh, um, it's kind of hard for me to see if you raise your hand. Just uh, type in the chat box that you'd like to say something, and I'll activate your mic for you. Um, uh, suggestions or uh, some things that you have learned uh, maybe in your experience with doing this uh, uh, type of thing would be great to hear or uh, solutions to problems that you've come up with when we're doing this would be great to hear as well or, uh, or anything of that type. Thank you so much uh, for, for joining. I hope to see you on Twitter and we can uh, talk about these things some more. So last call for any comments or discussion that we'd like to take place. Okay. Well, I guess that's about it then. All right. Thank you very much, and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference.